The data in the first link contains a random sample of the length of 60 tornadoes in the U.S. in 2017. The data in the second link contains a variety of variables that were measured for all tornadoes in the U.S. in 2017. Complete parts A through F below. So let's look and see what we're going to be doing here. Draw a relative frequency histogram of the length of the 60 tornadoes using a lower class limit of zero and a width of five. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click this first one. Here it is. I'm definitely going to want to open this in StatCrunch. So click that little button there and open. So one little, uh, slight little error I notice here is that the title should have opened up in the VARS one. So I need to copy that out and then paste it right here. Um, I like to go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to edit, rows, and delete. So I'm going to delete that first row there. I will report that, and maybe by the time you guys do this, they will have fixed that part. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a histogram. So graph, histogram, length of tornadoes, and it did give me a limit of lower class limit of zero and a width of five. Now normally I just take the defaults on this, but since they gave these to us, I want to do that. Allow us to match everything up. Okay, here's what it looks like. Now one small little error I made here, it'll be the same shape. It, they did want relative frequency, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now notice that their limit here, they go up to one on the x -axis, on the y-axis and they go out to 100. So just so I can get these shapes to look like that, I'm gonna click on this button here and go to x-axis and let's make that maximum so the x-axis, I said it was 100. So now we're out to 100. And let's go ahead and make that y-axis up to 1. Okay, didn't have to do that. But there we go. So which of these does it look like that is? So the biggest difference I see here is I only have this one guy right here. It looks like it around, I can hover over, it looks like around between 50 to 55. So which one of these only has one of those? Uh, it's gotta be A. And I could have done all that without making the adjustment, but I wanted to show you guys how to make the adjustment. Okay, what is the shape of the distribution? Hopefully you got this one. This one's clearly skewed to the right. Skinny on the right, skewed to the right. What is the relative frequency of the 60 tornadoes between five and 9.999 miles in length? Type an integer decimal round to three places as needed. So let's pull this back in. And in StackCrunch, I can hover over that bin. So this first, the second bin is the one I want. And notice that's from five. And then notice that, and remember in algebra, the uh, parentheses on the right means that we don't include the 10. So it goes up to 9.99999. And so that relative frequency is 0.117 if I'm doing three decimal places. 0.117. Now, part D. Draw a relative frequency distribution histogram for the length of tornadoes in Iowa using a lower class limit of zero and a width of five. So now we actually have to specify the state. So notice I need to use a different data set. That other one didn't have separated by state. So I need to click on this second data set here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Graph, histogram. I need to check what am I graphing here for the length of tornadoes in Iowa. Okay, so I need to come over here, length, and then remember here is where I need to say where the state equals Iowa. And I recommend if you don't already know the syntax, these variables right here, we can just put state equals I A. I recommend using the build command in the beginning, state, and then equals, and then let's choose Iowa, right here. Now, if I miss some of these, it's because I forget to press the add button or add column, so make sure that's what it looks like right there, and press okay. So that should be right. Well, let's go ahead and start bin. It's zero, and class width again is five. You know, I can go ahead and put the values above the bars if it asks a follow-up question, sometimes that's helpful. And there we go. Looks like I did it again. Let me go ahead and change this frequency to relative frequency. Okay. 
And again, they go up to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to make this visually the same. Maximum here is one. And it looks like they all go out to 50. So I'm gonna change that X axis to 50. You don't have to do that. But now we should really match up exactly with what they have. So it's clearly not A, because we have a, a break here. And there's should be here somewhere between 30 and 35, and we don't have any right here. Does not look like it's B, because I've got three bars here. Looks like C could be a possibility. And so it looks like it's C. Let me shrink this so we can see these together. There we go. And you can always expand this. There we go. And then it says, what is the relative frequency of tornadoes in 15 and the 19.999 miles in length? So basically between 15 and 20. And because I put those bars there, right, it's going to give it to me. 0. 0.0. We are having around the three places, though, so that could mess you up. There's between 15 and 20, so 0. 0.055. I would need another decimal place there. Draw a dot plot of the number of fatalities of all tornadoes in Missouri in 2017. So again, we're going to go back to the same data set, the second one here. Pull this up. Dot plot. Fatalities. State equals again MO. We'll leave everything here the same and press compute. There we go. Now notice that their x-axis goes out to 100, so I can do that. Or sorry, their x-axis goes out to 5, so I'm going to make that 5. And I don't think we need to change the y, so let's take a look. So it looks like we just have, it says up to two values per dot. Um, this is actually two values here. I can make this a little bigger, and maybe I can get it. There we go. So I stretched it out vertically, and I can see I have two dots here at one. A little tricky. So I, I might have marked C if I didn't do that. So we got to be careful on that. Up to two dots. So it could have been one dot or it could have been two. In this case, it was two. And let's blow this up just to make sure. Oh, I need to blow it up even more. That's a little hard to see, but there are two dots there. I think you get two choices. So if you didn't get, if you didn't get right on that one, it had it have to be this one. How many tornadoes in Missouri resulted in four or more fatalities? Well, we didn't have any, did we? So that'd be zero. The column number state represents the number of states the tornado traveled through. How many tornadoes traveled through two states? The U.S. Um, tornadoes in 2017 data set to find the number of tornadoes that traveled through two states. Okay, so I can go to graph. I could do a histogram or I could do just frequency since that's what I know I'm gonna do. Either one's fine, let's go ahead and do a histogram. And we're doing number of states. And let's just do a bin width of one because we're gonna need to know exactly how many through two states. So that's one to two. This is actually only two right here, and there are 66 that went through two states. A little hard to read, possibly, since we only have two bins like that. Let me go ahead and do a table, frequency table. And again, we'll do number of states. Maybe a little bit easier. Same thing, 66, and there's a relative frequency. Okay, so I hope that helps.